All right, folks, you are listening to MWM Podcast Books episode. And in today's episode, we have a special guest speaker, Mercy Nithya. So she's one of our organizers of our uh, book club. And it's a long pending episode and we are having her for the first time. So let's hear it from uh, Mercy Nithya. Hello, hello, Maddie. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I know we have been planning this since a very long time and I'm really glad it finally is happening. Yeah, so... Uh, Tell us about yourself. Uh, okay, I am Nitya. I am a master student at Christ University, and I have been reading since I was in eighth grade. But uh, because of the whole college drama that's going on, I haven't been able to read as much these days. But yeah, the book club has been helping a lot, motivate me to read. Okay, cool. So, what book you have for us in this podcast episode? Uh, so I have The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by uh, John Boyan. Okay, it's a very famous one and fortunately I have also read. So I can ask more insightful questions to you. Uh, so yeah, uh, start by telling the story for us. Uh, so one of the most uh, interesting things about this novel I found was it was uh, told by uh, by the point of view of a eight-year-old boy called Bruno. And it is, uh, it revolves around the timeline of when the Nazi um, Holocaust was happening. And World War Two time. Yes, yes. It was, it is centered around the World War Two and the Holocaust and everything. So, although this, uh, the author claims is a children's novel, it has a much deeper meaning to it. And I think everybody should read this book. Okay, so uh, can you tell more about the story, what it revolves around? Yeah, so this uh, talks about the life of an eight-year-old boy called Bruno and how uh, he has moved away from his so-called home to a new place, which we later learn that it is Auschwitz and how he deals with uh, his own identity, how he makes friends and how he understands uh, what is going on around him. So initially you, you claim that uh, it, it is a children's novel, but it has deeper meaning also. So when did you exactly read? Like when you were a kid or uh, after you? Uh, the first time I read this, I think it was like four or five years ago. And to be very honest, I didn't realize the meaning it kind of was trying to give out. Okay. And I very honestly, I, I was having a hard time understanding a few uh, specific terms in that. Uh, they specifically say out with instead of saying Auschwitz. Oh. <laughs> I initially did not understand uh, until I actually was looking up uh, Holocaust and uh, Auschwitz Birkenau uh, concentration camps and everything. But once I understood that, I did go back to the novel and I also did see the movie. And then I was like, oh damn, this has a lot to work. So uh, since I've read the story, uh, the story revolves around Bruno. But apart from Bruno, we have a lot of the characters. Yeah, yeah. So, whom all did you like and whom all did you hate? Because this story has both <laughs> you know, likable and uh, despicable characters. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I can't talk about this book without talking about Shmuel. Okay. Uh, the, no, no, the Jewish boy. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very, very sad story, to be honest. And I cried by the end of the book. I was quite disappointed with the movie because uh, they didn't uh, include a very important aspect that was there in the book. But I would say Shmuel is uh, one of my favorite characters and uh, of course I don't think I have to say but it's uh, Bruno's father who I absolutely hate in the novel. So uh, I really liked the you know when they they actually move from uh, the city I think city to this uh, place near the Paris to Okay. From Paris to Auschwitz, right? No, I think Berlin, the city to this place. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, it, it impacts him a lot because he likes that home, yeah. the city. He and has Auschwitz. a lot of friends and now... And and also he's homeschooled here. So he has a hard time, uh, end of uh, passing time, he finds it hard. Because he doesn't have friends, his uh, sister also doesn't really get along with him. His father is always busy and his mom always seems to be in a bad mood. So... Yeah, I mean, the 
core elements of this story or the novel is friendship yeah and uh, comes the layer for adults where we see that the concentration camps yeah. so how did the friendship uh, strike you uh, i think it's a very beautiful portrayal of friendship because it talks about how uh, race or religion or anything doesn't really matter when it comes to children because all they really want at the end of the day is companionship and uh, shmuel and bruno although they are on completely two different sides of each other's worlds they do find uh, happiness being with one another and they do also do a lot of things for one another and i think that uh, that really talks about how important friendship is and how friends are supposed to be yeah and you said uh, you cried towards the ending so like it's a sad ending i know for people who hasn't read it's a very sad ending it's not a happy it's a good story good friendship story but as i said children uh, will perceive it differently and that is the person to person uh so if you like or if you would like to modify the ending what would you uh, like to have the ending uh <laughs> this is this is new i have to think about it but uh, I don't think it would be practical for me to say that I wish uh, Bruno's father understood and everything but I would say maybe if the liberation of the camps happened along this time and uh, Shmuel happened to not die along with Bruno maybe it would be nice but I feel like I wouldn't really want to change the ending to be very honest and uh... i mean the, obviously the author had some uh, theme and idea to portray in the novel uh, but uh, the other uh, the friend of bruno uh, what's his name shmuel ah uh, shmuel so he's from hungary i think he has a yeah, background as well his father so i wish that they could have explored his back story as well it's a short novel right yeah. so it's around 200 pages yeah maybe uh, i i i kind of thought that they could have explored this boy's character as well what did you think Uh yeah I do agree and did, do you know that this book actually received a lot of criticism uh, for it okay it received a criticism yeah obviously yeah yeah it it yeah. has okay people were not at all okay with it because uh, they were like this is not uh, uh what do you say uh, this is not the right portrayal of what was actually happening yeah. but you also need to keep in mind that the author himself was not either a jew nor he was a german He's an Irish author. Okay. So he also specifically said it's a fiction novel. It's okay. a historical fiction. But it's realistic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> And he also did mention in his interviews after the whole criticism that uh, if people are trying to know about the Holocaust or about the World War Two, they should not rely on this book. And this is this comes under children's literature. he was like the only purpose behind writing this book was to introduce the children historical events because uh, i know that you did read so you can see how even for a child that book is not disturbing per se but if we read it and we understand the terminology that they have specifically that he has specifically written in a very different way then we understand how deep the novel is so i had marked some uh, i usually mark this uh, some sentences or lines which uh, strikes me do you have any uh, lines from the book yeah the the line i cried to it says uh, see uh, should i reveal the ending is no that problem. okay so uh, in the ending you see how uh, bruno and shmuel are inside a gas chamber and they are actually about to die but they both have no idea that that's going to happen so then uh, 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 yeah bruno looks at shmuel and he goes you are my best friend in the whole world you are my best friend he says and that's it i was like <laughs> that's not fair it's a emotional uh, yeah. yeah so uh, how was the writing uh i know a lot of people who really enjoy writing when it's a lot more complex but i have never really been that person I prefer when I am able to imagine things in an easier way. So I prefer when it is uh, simple to understand but at the same time descriptive at the right points. And this is something that I found to be very easy to read. Yeah. So so for someone who is just starting to read, 
and is not really okay with reading like too many pages at once or a very slow going story i think this would be nice but i wouldn't really say this will keep you hooked from the beginning this is a slow going novel but it's nice so as you said and i also resonate uh, it's a novel for all age groups right both children as well as adults so why would a why should a kid pick up this book and why should adults pick up this book from your perspective uh i mean like the author intended a child should pick up this book because this is how you start learning about history because i do remember uh, reading about the holocaust about world war 2 in 9th 10th grade it was extensive i do remember my social science teacher talking to us about gas chambers and all but we never really understood what it was all about we never really understood how bad how horrifying it was so i think this is a good start to keep that curiosity in children's mind that makes them like kind of explore things by themselves so when you explore something by yourself you learn something better and you dig deeper which doesn't really happen when we are reading for the sake of reading or doing something for the sake of doing so i would say that reason for children and for adults because nobody really knows what has happened all the people know that world war 2 happened they don't know this they don't know how bad it was and even now the whole israel palestine war that's going on i don't think a lot of people honestly care enough because it doesn't matter to them but it is a genocide just like it happened back then and we are all bystanders right now and i think knowing about the holocaust will actually help you understand and be more mindful when it comes to future okay so how did you end up reading this book or uh, how did you get to know this book that i i can't say because i don't know i think i just ran into it okay. somewhere and i was like okay, i want to read this cool uh so we were talking about the boy in the striped pajamas by john boyne it's a very uh, popular world famous book and uh, i think it has a abridged version for the kids as well because there is a graphic uh, novel yeah. yeah when i was talking about it a lot of people yeah, mentioned i mean uh, remember the name bruno so the character is so famous uh, it gets etched into your mind so this is the first podcast that you've done so how is feeling uh, i was quite nervous in the beginning but uh, i think as it went on it was fine okay, okay. <laughs> Hope you will uh, return for more podcast episodes. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Okay, uh, yeah. Let's thank uh, Mercy Nitya for a wonderful uh, book recommendation, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, and uh, it's the first episode for her, and it's good to have her. Thank, thank you a lot for uh, coming up after a long time. We have caught up. Uh, yeah, it's it's four point two five in Goodreads, and it should be available in any bookstores and uh, Amazon Prime. I mean. uh the online stores as well so do purchase it and have a read i have done a live stream on this as well and this is popular among the readers so it's a must read for anyone kids adults so do read it and once again thank you uh, thanks a lot uh, nitya thank you madi thank you everybody for listening in bye bye